Hi friends, I'm August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads. I'm gonna be answering all of your questions today. <laughs> Mostly. All of them? Kind of. Sort of. A lot of them. I am three coffees deep. Let's go ahead. Thank you so much for over 6k. I have not done a Q&A since I hit 1,000 subscribers, so this is very long overdue. Thank you so much for all of your interests and questions and inquiries. We're gonna hop into it. I'm gonna try and go as quickly as I can because there are so many questions while still having a dialogue and a conversation with you all. Just thank you so much for the love and the support. 6,000, I couldn't believe it, honestly. We are now well over 6,000, which is amazing, and I just appreciate you all so much. So thank you for your questions. I hope you all are doing really, really well. I have my handy dandy notebook here. I hand wrote your questions. So I'm gonna be referring to this list very frequently, not one, <laughs> Not two, but three pages of questions. Also, my handwriting from this distance looks so nice. Wow. <laughs> from far away, that looks that looks really good. I just kind of wrote these questions like as they kind of like came in basically. So they're gonna bounce between like bookish content, lifestyle content, that kind of stuff. So I hope you can buckle up, uh, get some coffee, tea, take a little snack and we'll just hang out and answer some questions. And I'm definitely feeling the caffeine in my system. So we're in for a ride, let's let's go. So I got this question a lot starting off with uh, top three favorite books. I got it quite a few times. A few people asked like top five favorite books. I'm just gonna give you three. I don't know if I can even think of five. First, Snow by Betsy Howie. If you've been here, you probably know that. Second, Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. And third, I'm gonna say The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak because I think that's a book that I've read the most in my lifetime. Like I reread it several times. It really like inspired me a lot to continue reading and it really made me like fall in love with reading in the first place and made me realize like what literature could do, like the potential of literature. And I thought that was awesome. Favorite music artists. Okay, friends, I, I don't think I've ever really talked on this channel about the music I listen to, but I listen to a lot of weird stuff, um, very eclectic. Eclectic. A lot of my favorite bands are in the witch house genre, so favorites definitely Salem, Crimes, not Grimes, Crimes with a three instead of an E. I also just like absolutely love the Cranberries. I was devastated when Dolores O'Riordan passed away. I also really like listening to Thursday. That's like an older band that like I still just really love. I listened to them in middle school. I also really enjoy mouth. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's about it. I have a very eclectic taste. It's very hard for me to like really love a full music artist and feel connected to them. I feel like for that I need to like their entire discography, which is just like a very rare amount of musicians that I can listen to that I love, like basically everything they've done. So those are kind of some of my favorites. Would you ever write your own book? Yes, I would love to write my own book one day. I loved writing as a kid. I would write my own little like YA stories on, an, on my old like big old clunky computer in my room on a floppy disk. <laughs> um, so I would love to do that. I think my writing style uh, is very similar to like, I think the closest author I've been able to find that's similar is like Jeanette Winterson and Jenny Slate. So like very odd, cryptic, confusing, but also whimsical. Um, but I don't know if I'd have like a narrative or a story in mind, but I, I would love one day to write my own book. I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> when did your love of reading begin? My love of reading began when I was really young. I'll insert some photos here that I have found of me reading and holding books as a young kid. I have always loved reading. I remember like hanging out with my family and just always having a book. There are home videos of me reading out loud to my parents, just like wanting to share what I had just read and how cool it was. I've just always really loved it. So yeah, ever since I was really little and I'm really happy about that. Is YouTube your main source of income? If not, how do you combine work with YouTube? YouTube is most definitely not my main source of income. I am a full-time wedding and portrait photographer so that's what I do full-time so I am fully self-employed so how I personally combine the two is just doing my best <laughs> I don't know the job I have mainly I work on weekends so that's usually when I do photo shoots and then during the week is when I'll film YouTube content and then at the same time I'll be editing photo galleries while I'm editing videos so I mainly film and do stuff on weekdays and then I'm out on the out on the field basically on weekends so that's my main source of income that's what I do I absolutely love it and yeah. Can you share your engagement story? I 
actually have a whole vlog, I will link it down below, where my partner and I road tripped to Virginia and at the start of that vlog I had no idea we would be getting engaged and by the end of the video we were engaged. So I will go ahead and link that video down below if you would like to watch it. But basically, yeah, we were hiking in the Shenandoah National Park and we were like going to all these like small little hikes. Some of them were a lot bigger. And when the sun started going down, we went to this like valley and there was this huge waterfall at the very bottom of this like downhill hike. And we were the only ones there. And that's where he proposed. And it was just us in this beautiful waterfall in Virginia. And it was absolutely amazing. And then when we hiked back up the mountain, we immediately got in the car, headed back to where we were staying for that vacation and we picked up a pizza, so. It was perfect. <laughs> What's your favorite book genre? Magical realism, speculative fiction, surrealism, abstract. I love that stuff. Uh, just anything that makes me question or think or use brain power. I can't read them all the time because it is a lot more brain power and they're usually very cryptic and written like super deliciously and it's not straightforward linear narrative, but but it's my favorite. Usually those, those are the books that become like my favorites of all time or just abstract, surreal, magical realism. You don't know what's reality and what's not. I love that. Favorite book of all time? Snow by Betsy Howie. Easy peasy answer. I literally can't wait to reread that book. Any tips on how to pick good books while thrifting? That's a great question and then several people like liked that comment. I would love to do a dedicated video sometime soon, uh, maybe this summer, of how I personally find good books while thrifting. I did do a thrift with me video about a year ago now and that was just kind of like where to find good used books and you know where to get started in thrifting. Finding good books, that's a different thing. Uh, I would say I'd give you a little nugget right now but I'd love to do like a full video of like going to a thrift store and just looking at books and how to find good ones. But I think that is very subjective. What does good mean? I think it's something you're interested in. So my piece of advice right now before making that video is going to be pull the book out of the shelf. Don't just look at spines. Discredit the color of the spine, the font of the spine, the title of the book. Pull it out <laughs> of the shelf. Don't get so picky and judgmental when you see a spine that doesn't look like something you'd ever be interested. Pull it out. Look at the cover. Read the back. Read the plot description. Open it up, read the first page. Do you like it? Good. <laughs> like just invest in taking time while thrifting, pulling things out and actually looking at them. You know, as humans, we are naturally aesthetic people. No matter what we say, we do judge books by covers, but like just pull it out, look at it closer, read into it, see if it's something you're interested in. And there you go. <laughs> but I'll definitely do like a way more in-depth video of that sometime. That would be a lot of fun. How many books do you own? I did not count prior to this video. Um, so I think last time I counted, I have t over 200 on my physical TBR. And then the books that I've read, probably around like 100 or maybe similar to here. So I would say maybe over 300 books. I think that sounds about right, which is nice having bookshelves. It doesn't look like you have over 300 books. Books. It looks a little bit more organized than that. So I would say maybe like around 300, 350. I don't have an exact answer and I really do not want to count. Sorry. <laughs> what are some of your least favorite genres and tropes? Uh, least favorite genres are genres that I really haven't given a whole lot of chances to, but the few books that I've read in those genres, I really did not like. So it's like hardcore fantasy, like full on fantasy, fantasy worlds, world building, characters, like I just can't get into it. And those are specifically like fantasy series too. I just, I can't, I, I don't. I can't not for me. Um, and another genre is romance. I, I just have not vibed with romance, but I do find in like the winter time and around like the holidays, I crave like just a sappy romance. So I'll give some a go, but they just like, they, they really don't work for me. I think I'm way more of a love story person rather than a romance book. So if there's a novel that features like a love story in it. I'm there. Like a full romance book. It's just not really my favorite genre. Least favorite tropes. That's a really, really good question. I would say I really don't like, I feel like you find this mainly in romance, but like just miscommunication. Miscommunication as a plot device is just not it for me. What other tropes do I not like? I feel like 
like a lot of them are based on romance, like friends to lovers or enemies to lovers. I don't even know if this would be considered a trope, but I really don't like when characters themselves are tropes. Uh, when they don't actually have like an identity, it's just a preconceived notion of like who and how a person should be. Like you have like the cheerleader, the jock, the goth kid, the smart kid, and that's all they are is like they stay in this bubble. I don't like when characters aren't fully developed and they're just tropes in themselves, unless the author is trying to do something interesting with that. So that's my answer, I guess. I feel like I would have more tropes that I can think of, but I really can't. Um, so yeah. Ooh, who are your favorite booktubers? Okay, I have several. First off though, we have to give a big shout out to Emmy of Emmy Reads. Uh, every time she uploads a video, I'm like stopping everything to watch it. I think she's inspired so many of us to fall in love with reading, to even create our own booktube channel. So like just big shout out. She is, she's the booktube kind of queen. I also really love Linen Librarian, uh, Rebecca Eats Books, CJ Reads, Simon Savage's channel, Heroine's Corner. Oh my gosh, I have so many and I wish I had it in front of me, uh, but I will link all of them down below and here. So please go follow them. They're content that like I, as soon as I come out with a video, I'm immediately watching it. So I will link them down below. Let's give them some love. They're just some of my absolute favorites. I just really love their personalities. It's just very genuine wholesome and so many great book recommendations like again if you like my channel and like underrated or unheard of books you would probably really like these channels as well what are some of your favorite movies and shows let's get one out of the way because i have seen several people comment on my videos that they can recognize some of my tattoos first off it's twin peaks twin peaks is my all-time favorite show uh specifically the first two seasons that came out in like you know late 90s that era was just absolutely amazing twin peaks is my favorite show hands down followed by sex in the city sex in the city another 90s classic favorite movies of all time though everything everywhere all at once phenomenal comet and um oh my gosh i have so many favorite movies but i will say i'll just say like interstellar i really do love interstellar just like the whole thing and what's interesting about all three of those movies they do have very similar themes of exploring space and time alternate realities but what makes them interesting too oh and i should say it follows it follows is another top movie love that one but what all of them also have in common is they all have their own unique soundtrack that was created just for the movies and i think that really amplifies the experience I have when watching a film is if it's like completely catered, customized, unique soundtrack to films. All four of those have amazing soundtracks and yes I have listened to them while like working or something. Not just watching the movie like listening to the soundtrack and I'm not a soundtrack person other than these ones so those are my top uh movies and shows. Okay next question I received several similar and in the same vein as this one and it's are you ever tempted to purchase new releases or books that aren't thrifted? I also had another question that was very very similar to this that was asking do you ever have to like hold yourself back from buying brand new books and the honest answer is no like I I'm not holding myself back I'm not holding myself accountable like just because I love buying books a little bit cheaper or used and thrifted it doesn't mean I'm like holding myself back from new releases I just genuinely don't really have an interest in new releases it's very rare that I have like a very strong connection and really want to buy a brand new release. So no, I really don't hold myself back, but I also am not very interested. And I also just don't put myself in the position to be surrounded by new releases all the time either. I'm not just like casually going to Barnes and Noble or anything like that. Like if I want a new book, I will go to like Little Free Libraries or Goodwill. Like that's just how I operate. So no, I'm never like restricting myself from that. I'm not intentionally being like, I'm not allowed to buy any new releases. That is not it at all. And I'm so sorry if that's like the the air I was putting out. It's that I just, I just don't have an interest. I'd much rather read things that interest me that I find at the places I'm already going to and not going out of my way to buy like a brand new book. So yeah, I'm no, I don't hold myself back at all. I'm not forcing myself to not buy new releases. And if you're interested in new releases, there's nothing wrong with that. And supporting independent bookstores, supporting the authors and the artists, like there is nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> so yeah, any new tattoo ideas? Yes, <laughs> I have several. I am currently designing and working on some designs and illustrations for my next few pieces, and they're going to be related to Snow by Betsy Howie, which is going to be amazing. So I'm kind of 
coming up with content kind of like slowly I'm not rereading the book to find motifs that I like in it it's just more of like trying to find exact quotes that really worked with me and trying to design and illustrate art that resembles that for me personally. So I'm currently working on that. Also very interested in getting a piece designed and created and put on my body by like a professional stick and poke tattoo artist. But I do anticipate that being quite a lengthy process, like going on a wait list and probably a lot of money. So that's gonna take a while. But eventually, hopefully in the next like two years, I would really love to have a professional stick and poke tattoo somewhere on my skin. How old is Winston and what made you get a naked cat? Winston is gonna be three in October. And what made me originally get a hairless cat was I am very, very allergic to hairy cats. I'm very allergic, but I knew I wanted a companion and I've always like lived in apartments ever since I moved out of my parents' house where we, I grew up with dogs. So we were never a cat family, but I knew I did not have like the time or the energy to care for a dog and living in apartments makes that really difficult to have a dog. So I did a lot, a ton of research on hairless cats and cats before deciding to buy one. Editing August here. I forgot to mention in this clip too that Winston was adopted. So he was uh, rehomed. We rehomed him. I found my first hairless cat online as an adoptee as well. So definitely adopt. Don't shop. Hairless cats especially. There's a lot of breeding going on. So please just do your research and adopt, 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 and rehome. I've had three sphinx cats in my life so far. Winston included. They are the joys of my life. They are the absolute best and I love them so incredibly much and they're just the most wonderful companions. Um, just so snuggly and wonderful and I did a lot of research. They're very high maintenance and they do require a lot of attention um, but it's just worth it. I mainly got it because of cat allergies but also like I just really needed and wanted a companion and an animal to take care of and to love and to be loved in return. And yeah, Winston's sassy, but he's actually sleeping right now. So hopefully he'll stay sleeping through the entirety of this video. What are your sun, moon, and rising signs? I am an Aries sun. I'm an Aries, but both my moon and rising are in Scorpio. Uh, so she's <laughs> comes across as like very bubbly outgoing and then the moon and the rising definitely bring me back down very watery very very emotional person also it wasn't until like two weeks ago or something my sister and i were comparing our astrological charts and stuff she noticed that i have i have no earth <laughs> no earth signs in my chart at all so literally, I am, I'm, I'm a very emotive person. I have a lot of expression and a lot, just a lot of emotions in my body. And I rarely feel super grounded. And uh, I also have like hardly any air in my chart. So I'm literally fire and water. So I'm just constantly living in this duality and dichotomy of like energy, sadness, happiness, deep, deep bouts of feeling. So those are my signs. Okay, next question is, have you always been vegan? Can you share your story and do you have any tips for someone looking to transition and is overwhelmed slash intimidated with where to start? So I have not always been vegan and I will just be super transparent. I am not fully vegan now. I have over time included more and more like dairy products back into my life to see how I do. The reason I personally went vegan was because I have a chronic autoimmune disease and going vegan actually really alleviated and basically eliminated all of the symptoms I had from my chronic immune disease and I think there are so many wonderful ways to switch nowadays uh, with the products available and if you're intimidated to start a vegan diet I say right now if you can immediately buy vegan mayonnaise and vegan butter easiest transition they taste exactly the same as what you've been used to but it's plant-based and no animal products whatsoever. Absolutely amazing. Also just do a lot of, you're gonna have to spend some extra money probably and doing taste tests of what kind of brands you like if you want to eat faux meat. I'm a big faux meat person. I don't eat meat now at all. I don't think I will ever go back to eating meat. I have found my favorite brands. I will put some on the screen here, so maybe you can screenshot them, but they're my personal favorites. I really love them. I think they're delicious. 
they taste the same to me as like normal stuff but yeah just make like small changes find your favorite brands what you like find meals that you find really filling and satisfying maybe when you go out to eat try getting like an impossible burger or a beyond burger instead of a normal burger try a vegan pizza i would say start small doing some incorporation of like vegan condiments and just kind of go from there and explore i still when i grocery shop i buy mainly like i would say 99 percent vegan products the one thing i'll buy is like cheese i'm really into pepper jack cheese right now and there is no substitute for that vegan wise like just a block of like pepper jack cheese i have not been able to find it so um that is the one thing that i do buy that is not uh completely dairy free so i'm not claiming i'm a 100 percent perfect vegan at all i hope that helps a little bit if being a photographer and youtuber weren't your current jobs what would you be doing I would love to work in a bookstore, be around books and helping people find books and shelving books, even if it's something clerical like shelving or organizing or whatever. I think that would be a lot of fun or working in like a thrifty resale antique place. I would love that. How old are you? I'm 27. This is a great question. Okay, we have what was the first underground and unpopular book you read that made you realize there are some masterpieces hidden outside the bestseller list? Thank you for this question. So eloquently put. I absolutely love it. The book that really opened my eyes and it was after I graduated from high school and I left university and I was just getting back into reading for fun. The book that really opened my eyes was The Hermit. I believe it's by Eugene Ionesco. This was also one of the first like translated books I read like for fun. I read this book for fun over the course of a few days in the summer and I just like fell in love with it and I really wish I kept my copy. I had never heard of it, I didn't know anything about it and I, and I bought it at a used bookstore as well. So I just, I, that book really, really opened my eyes. And since then, I just love finding specifically like translated works, tiny, this is a small paperback as well. Just really odd little things that I never heard of before. I read that one in 2014 or 2015. That one really opened my eyes to what was out there besides what I was seeing on the shelves of like Target or Barnes and Noble. This is a cute question. What is your favorite flower? <laughs> that is such a great question. I don't know. My middle name is actually Lily. So I've always been kind of by biased towards lilies and liking lilies. I think they're really pretty. Um, I really like honeysuckles. I think they're really pretty too. Really like clovers. I know they're technically like a weed, but I really like clovers as well. And roses. I really like, look at these. Look at these. They're beautiful. The yellow and the pink. Divine. What does your dream library look like? My dream library looks like floor to ceiling bookshelves art absolutely everywhere, colors everywhere. I want like vibrant, saturated, just like over the top colorful art everywhere, like thrifted pieces, really funky, weird stuff, decor, candles, like just fun, just colorful and just like overflowing with books everywhere. I don't know, just a little like organized chaos and really pretty and aesthetic at the same time, specifically around like colors. I think that would be really nice. Can you tell us about your tattoos? I have gotten over the past year and a half that I've been on booktube so many questions about my tattoos and asking if I could do like a tattoo tour and I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm going to film a tattoo tour sometime this summer. I think that would be a lot of fun especially because I get so many questions about them. Uh, I would love to tell you all more about them and show them off. But to give like a little, I guess, teaser or interesting fact about my tattoos is every piece I have basically is mirrored on the other side. It's just a different design, but they are in exactly the same place. Um, same with all, all down all down my body. <laughs> so if I get one on one side of my body, I get one on the other side in almost the exact same place. I only have one, no, well, I guess technically two tattoos that do not mirror each other. And one is just like in the middle of the back of my neck. So like, I can't, I'm not gonna get anything on the front here probably. Um, but every other piece, I don't know what it is. It's something that started really early when I started getting tattoos that just felt right for me. It makes me feel so much more balanced if I have something on the other side matching it. I feel really off if they aren't matching. Like I can't think of wanting just like one random piece here and not something on the other side. Like it, I don't know. So everything reflects they are symmetrical in terms of placement. So that's the fun little fact for now that I'll leave you with. And hopefully in the near future, I'll film a little like full tattoo tour for you all. What is a book you think everyone should read at least once in their life? I don't have one. I don't have one. I think what I'll recommend instead is just read memoirs. 
read memoirs. Read memoirs specifically of people who have a very different life than you. It's entertaining, it's educational. Intentionally read from perspectives that are different than your own in terms of race, class, gender, sexual orientation, what have you. Like just read something outside of your own experience. So just, just read memoirs. A few of my favorites are Desert Flower and Leaving Mother Lake. Uh, absolutely amazing memoirs that taught me a lot. I learned a lot and they were also very enjoyable to read. So just read nonfiction and memoirs, I think. How do you cheer yourself up on a sad day? Oh, I am one for comfort and coziness. So definitely getting into my comfiest clothes, which for me is usually just like PJs, just like something I can like really cuddle up in. Heated blanket if it's chilly out or just like any sort of like fuzzy blanket, anything with like fuzzy soft texture, swaddle yourself in that. And for me, it's comfort food. <laughs> like comfort food, for me, potatoes, french fries, mashed potatoes, I burgers, just warm comforting foods for me is what really helps. And I personally, when I'm having a sad day, I don't want to be around people. I know it's probably helpful to be around others, to like boost yourself up, but I like to isolate. So I would just like probably cuddle up with Winston, be in bed, be on the couch, cuddled up, eating eating food that like makes me feel grounded and warm and cozy and maybe watch a show or something or a movie or maybe even like a nostalgic movie from my childhood, have an intentional cry. So yeah, that's what I do on sad days. <laughs> favorite music albums. Okay, my favorite music albums, I consider albums that I can listen to from start to finish without skipping any songs. So definitely, basically anything by the Cranberries. I will never skip songs by the Cranberries. I will also say Santa Gold's debut album, Santa Gold. I can listen to that whole thing, I love it so much. It's such a jam. Reminds me of my, I think it was my sophomore year of high school. It was so good. Shrine by Purity Ring is great. Youth Lagoons, Savage Hills Ballroom. That's all I can think of right now. Yeah. Do you have a favorite paranormal book? Yes, I do. Graves End. I am blanking on the author's name, but I have a whole vlog dedicated to it basically where I read it while staying in a spooky Airbnb that I do believe is haunted. <laughs> I really feel like that Airbnb was friggin' haunted, but I'll link it down below. It is a true story, a true ghost story of this woman's encounters with living in a haunted house and it just feels so uncomfortable because it is just it feels like you're just talking with a friend over coffee and they're telling you this horrific story of what they're experiencing how's work going thank you for asking <laughs> that's such a wholesome question work is going really well my wedding season is ramping up i have two weddings in the next two weeks so it's gonna be very busy and basically from this month july until january i am booked for weddings so every month i'm gonna be out traveling photographing weddings, and on top of that, doing engagement photos, couples photos, a lot of travel that hopefully I can take you all along with me for reading vlogs, but it's going really, really well, and I'm really happy with being self-employed. Like, it was the best decision ever to just become fully self-employed. I feel really good, have way more artistic freedom and creativity and balance for a social life and not overworking myself. It's just really good. Do you like to read fantasy books? Any recommendations? Sadly, no, I don't really like fantasy books. The only fantasy book I can think of that I really enjoyed was The Devourers by Indra Das. So I definitely recommend that one. I really liked it. That was the only one. It also features like a very interesting love story, but it's with like mythic creature. It's just really interesting. And I thought it was really well done. That's like the only like fantasy book I think I really enjoyed that isn't like magical realism but is just fantasy. Do you love your apartment and would you live anywhere else? I do love this apartment. I think it's adorable. It's cute. I really love it. I don't like the location necessarily because I am on a very busy road. It takes me like three times longer than it needs to to film videos because I'm constantly stopping for vehicles to pass by, very loud vehicles. Um, so yeah, it's also very cramped uh, for me and my partner. So we would like to live somewhere else eventually because at, at this space we've just outgrown it and uh, I'd love to live in like a full house. I personally would really like to have land. I would love to have a backyard. Apartment living is convenient 
but I just want access to outside. I want to live with land or near a park or nature or just have freaking trees around me would be awesome. Somewhere just like sit outside like a back porch or a patio. But I do think uh, where we currently live geographically, like the city we live in and the state we live in, we really like right now. But we're still going to be, my partner and I are traveling around and making plans to travel to other cities and other states soon. And it will be interesting to see how we feel about different states, you know, and like, oh, do we like it here? What, what do we think? But for now, we still really like the climate and how close we are to living by so many lakes in Michigan. It is a really beautiful state. What's your Myers-Briggs personality type? I'm an INFJ. Yeah. <laughs> Book recommendations for the summer. Ooh, good question. Maybe I should do a video on this as well. <laughs> Book recommendations for the summer. I would definitely say White Ghost Girls by I think it's Alice Alice Greenwell or something like that. I'd also say like The Pisces by Melissa Broder, Orlando by Virginia Woolf, Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter. I would recommend those. I think those are pretty good summer beachy kind of reads. Have you ever read Indian literature? If yes, could you recommend some? Yes, I have. Uh, I did mention it before, but uh, The Devourers by Indra Das. Absolutely beautiful. The author is from Calcutta, I believe. Also, I'd recommend, I'm still listening to this as an audiobook, but I'm almost done with it. It's Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. It's also from Calcutta. Uh, so I would really love to read more Indian literature. So if anyone else has more recommendations, please feel free to comment them below. I'd love more recommendations. I have gotten this question so many times uh, since starting booktube and it's been on comments on my bookstagram, my DMs, on YouTube. Let me grab it. The people have been wondering and asking questions about where I got my bookmark. You see this in every single vlog. It is the bookmark I use for every single book I read and asking where I got it. My mom got me this when I was nine, 10 years old when she went to Guatemala. So it is like handmade. And I absolutely love that there is like a little gem on it because that's what I do to face the page that I'm currently reading so I know what page I'm actually on. I love this thing. I absolutely adore this just piece of fabric and it's beautifully woven and it has lasted so long friends. If I got this when I was 10 I'm 27 now. It has lasted 17 years and I've used this for almost every single book that I've read. And my sweet partner has gifted me so many wonderful bookmarks but I still only use this one and I love that it reminds me of my mom every time I use it too and just makes me really happy and yeah I, I love this so Guatemala 17 years ago. <laughs> Sorry I don't know. <laughs> There's no like link in description, um, but I love it so much. And I'm, it just makes me really happy that you all notice it too and love it too, that, that makes me really happy. I'll put that right there, there we go. Ooh, this next question's really interesting and we're nearing the end, my friends, I promise. Three hugely popular books that you wish you could find at a thrift store. My first, uh, definitely The Master and the Margarita. I would love to find a copy of this book. It is more like kind of considered a classic, I guess, um, but it is popular. A lot of people have read it. I was excited to answer this question because I only had like the Master and the Margarita in mind. What other popular books? Oh, I would I would love to find like the whole Sailor Moon graphic novel series at a thrift store. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Could somebody just like donate the entire series and I can read it? That would be cool. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I have an answer for the third one. I think that's it. I don't know. <laughs> I really can't think. Probably like a classic or something that I just can't think of that I'd want to read. I don't know. What books made you start to love reading? Growing up as a young kiddo, it was definitely The Anybody's by N.E. Buddy, which I reread last year. Absolutely phenomenal. I remember geeking out to my parents about this book and saying like how much I absolutely loved it. And it was just so whimsical. It was like my first kind of experience, like preteen magical realism because um, I didn't really grow up with like the Harry Potter books. So this was, it just blew my mind. I loved it so much. That one really got me into reading and finding, I guess what shaped my reading experience now, which is magical realism and awesome protagonists and characters and found family. So the anybody is definitely when I was younger. And then when I went to university, I definitely was at like the lowest point in my life in terms of like mental health and mental stability and was suffering with a lot of mental illness and um, was just having a really hard time and 
I was not reading for pleasure and it wasn't until I was walking home from university and it was like late at night and I saw somebody had just left a whole like box of books on the side of the road basically and it was in like a, a bin that used to have oranges in it so I just remember vividly it said like oranges and I went to go look at it on their front lawn and I picked up I was told there'd be cake by Sloane Crosley I never knew anything about it never heard of Sloane Crosley didn't know what this book was about and I brought it home and I read it all that night and into the morning like while cooking breakfast just reading this book and laughing out loud to myself it's a series of comedic personal essays and I just felt alive again like I I forgot the joy of like reading for fun and for pleasure and for humor and for laughing how important it is to laugh especially if you're going through a hard time like that book <laughs> I don't want to be dramatic and say like it saved me but to those people who left a whole box of books outside their front yard basically whatever a yard is considered in toronto like hardly anything but thank you i don't again not to be dramatic like saved my life but like you really brought joy into my life and changed the course of my life where now i have read for pleasure ever since then and now i'm here talking to you all about books and have a booktube community and have you all here and it's a safe place to talk about literature and books and that trajectory like if I had just gone home a different route that day, you know, like it's just stuff like that. Like, so that book, as soon as I finished reading it, I immediately went to a used bookstore around the corner from me and just like would spend hours looking at books and picking up my next read and really trying to find what my genre was and what I enjoyed and what I liked. So that one really got me out of like a multiple year long reading slump because I didn't really read for pleasure high school into like university basically um, because there's just so much required reading. So getting back into that was really, really special. Okay, last question, friends, last question. This video is long, but I hope it's been entertaining. What are your upcoming dreams and goals? Thank you for asking. <laughs> I have some things, I have some things planned. My partner and I would really like to start a used reselling, thrifting web store. Like basically just selling things on Instagram that we find while thrifting. I find so many cool things while thrifting, but I don't have the space in my apartment to like keep everything I find so I'd love to like clean them up repair them if needed and do some reselling without astronomical price increases but just making used goods find a new home I really do feel like that's like my purpose in my life is like discarded items and books and things and treasures and finding them and giving them a new loving home like I feel so pulled to that and called to that and I would love to like make that a reality so that's definitely an upcoming thing I would love to start doing that in like the next few months months or year at least would be awesome and doing that with my partner would be amazing because we've definitely talked about it um it's just gonna have to be more boots on the ground but if we do it and we launch it you all will probably be the first ones to know and I would love to like showcase the things I find at thrift stores because I find so many cool things and they deserve to have a loving home and you know can like ship them out wherever you are like do some shipping and like get some cool fun stuff and have like a little store I I just think it'd be so much fun and selling books too I think would be cool too like reselling books um that need another home too because I do find so many cool books while thrifting they might just not be like my taste but I find such good ones that I know other people would be really interested in so that's a really big upcoming dream and goal another one is just continue to grow my business and to grow booktube just by like making fun content and partnering with people and just having fun honestly being happy and having fun so thank you all so so incredibly much for being here friends I hope you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more and that it was fun and hopefully I was able to answer your questions thank you so much for your interest and for submitting these these were so fun to answer <laughs> and I hope it was entertaining to hear my responses too thank you again so much for over 6,000 thank you for your support and your love and just your genuine curiosities and your kind comments and all the things. I, I really so appreciate you all so freaking much. I cannot wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Until then, stay cozy my friends. Bye!